Are you stunned? Are you shocked? Are you surprised? Are you happy? Are you dejected, Miami fans? Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Just a couple hours after it was announced by Manny Diaz via statement that uh, the Hurricanes will open up the 2019 season against Florida with Jaron Williams as the starting quarterback. And of course, we've had much debate, discussion, analysis about the three-man battle for the quarterback position at Miami throughout the offseason involving Ohio State transfer Tate Martell, Nikosi Perry, who gained about half the starts last year, and then, of course, Jaron Williams. And I got to say that Jaron Williams was typically not just on my channel, but in every other facet, every other platform, every other site poll that I saw was typically the number three guy. Uh, when uh, fans were asked, who's going to win the starting quarterback job or who should win the starting job? Jaron Williams was typically the number three guy. And there was distance between Perry and Martell and Williams. Uh, Tate Martell, wow. He took some jabs at Justin Fields when Justin Fields transferred from Georgia, where he was not able to unseat Jake Fromm and went to Ohio State, basically saying, yeah, you took a swing and miss. Uh, you better not take too many more swings and misses. Well, Tate Martell, at least at the outset of 2019, has not won the job, and he takes a big swing and a miss in favor of Jaron Williams. Uh, Nikosi Perry was talked about, uh, obviously, because he was the one guy that we saw play, again, about half the season in sharing time with Malik Rozier in 2018. 50% passer, 13 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. So he, he showed us some good signs, but he also was very inconsistent uh, with a lot of weapons, but also deficiencies along the offensive line. Jaron Williams was pretty much more of the unknown and the guy that uh, flew under the radar. And I know a lot of Miami fans, you are going to let me know that, hey, maybe you predicted this, maybe you saw it coming, and some of you did. Definitely some of you reached out to me throughout the last several months and said Jaron Williams is the guy. Uh, based on reports from practice, based on what we've seen out of Perry, Tate Martell in limited action at Ohio State. There seem to be very much similarities between the three quarterbacks, but also big differences. Tate Martell, uh, probably the most of the, um, in, in terms of a skill set, the outlier, dynamic running ability, more so than the other two, the guy that could take the top off of defense, both as a physical runner and as a speed guy outside the pocket, guy that could... Uh, change games with his running ability, but also a guy that maybe left something to be desired as a passer. A little bit more inaccurate than the other two. And maybe not having quite the arm strength to make all the throws, to make good throws, to make accurate throws at times, but more inconsistency out of Martell and not the upside as a thrower. With Nikosi Perry, Based on what I've heard, based on what I've seen out of Perry, again, not seeing Martell throw a downfield at Ohio State in mop-up duty, and certainly not seeing it out of Jaron Williams, other than what uh, many of you have seen at spring practice in the spring games, uh, is that Nikosi Perry possibly at the strongest arm. But Jaron Williams uh, may be the most accurate of the passers, maybe the most gifted of the passers based on what we've heard. So I go to the 247 Sports article uh, when the decision was made by Manny Diaz and made public. In a statement, Diaz says, all three guys show tremendous improvement and development, which is a credit to their hard work and the work of Dan Enos and his offensive staff. We believe we can win with all three guys. However, we feel like Jaron has the greatest upside due to his passing ability, instincts, and determination, Jaron Williams so showing determination, possibly more so than the other two, because it comes down to what? It comes down to passing ability, both as uh, somebody who can not just show a strong arm, but show the ability to anticipate throws, throw in tight windows, throw um, accurately. Uh, also to throw at the right timing, and obviously make the right decisions with the offense. Throw it to the right guy at the right time. Read the defense. Uh, a guy that could show the running ability. And Williams and Perry, though not as dynamic as Tate Martell, running, certainly good enough. Mobile, fluid quarterbacks that could burn the defense when needed. And then, of course, who's going to grasp the offense? Who's going to show the leadership skills? Well, 
as a defensive guy, Manny Diaz definitely showing in some of the things that he has said over the offseason that he would value a quarterback who would protect the football. He believes in his defense. The defense is going to take leads and protect them as long as they get just a little help from the offense. Sure, they got to score points. They need to be more consistent, not more explosive on offense this year. They need to be more consistent, and part of that is going to be protecting the football. Jaron Williams, very excited, said here uh, via social media, it means the world. This is something that I've always strived for growing up. It's been my dream since I was a kid. When I was six years old, I'd sit in front of the TV and watch Michael Vick play. That's a dream I have always had, and I've strived for it. Having the opportunity to lead this team is the opportunity of a lifetime, and I'm going to take full advantage of it. He's only made three starts or three passes attempts at uh, the collegiate level against Savannah State, one of three, 17 yards. That's it. So we just know very little about Jaron Williams in terms of what we've seen. But of course, high, high recruit, number five rated passer coming out of high school, number 77 overall uh, player. That's, that's rarefied air, top 77 player in the nation, regardless of position, coming out of high school, according to the 247 composite. Your thoughts about the Miami choice of Jaron Williams as starting quarterback against Florida in just two weeks. Week zero, huge game for both programs uh, based on the rivalry, but based on the national rankings and what's expected for Florida to continue to ascend uh, in the uh, national perception and also Miami coming off a down year at 7-6, and six, trying to show that they're worthy of challenging for an ACC Coastal Division Championship and maybe beyond that. Let's talk it up right here. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football.